If you're thinking about moving to Folsom, California, Folsom is on the agenda tonight, today. Aaron is uh, an aficionado on Folsom. I've done a ton of deals there. So we're going to talk about Folsom, California and the Sacramento Metro. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's get started with Folsom. All right, Aaron, how's it going, my friend? What's going on, man? How you doing? Good, good, good. Well, everybody knows my backstory in Folsom. I've been selling a lot in Folsom Ranch, Folsom, sure. American River Canyon, all that stuff. So talk to us a little bit about your aficionado status at Folsom. <laughs> so I, I like Folsom. I've lived in Folsom. My parents lived in Folsom. My in-laws live in Folsom. I have other family members that are out there still too. So I'm out there all the time. In fact, my wife's there right now. I'll be there on Thursday at the Palladio for Santa with the kids and all that stuff. So, you know, Folsom is one of the nicest uh, suburbs of Sacramento. I mean, you just like if if all the great suburbs were like, you know, stacked in order of, you know, number one through, you know, five. I feel like no matter who you're talking to, Folsom's going to like be in like the top three. And really the only deciding factor for most people is like, what side of town are they, are they trying to live on? Right. Yeah. And if you're somebody that you're good with being on highway 50 versus highway 80, um, you know, Folsom's where it's at. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons behind that, but it's for one, it's really nice. It's clean. Uh, there's a lot of newer construction, not brand new, although that's going bonkers south of the 50 with Folsom Ranch, Russell Ranch, uh, you know, Brookstone, all, all those different areas yeah. that are getting built out. But even if we just go back over like the last like 20 to 30 years, the the majority of Folsom has, you know, gotten built out over time. And it's just it's a really nice place to live. Um, not to mention that the schools are top notch, you know, there's tons of like, uh, biking trails, hiking, walking, you know, little lakes and rivers and, you know, all sorts of stuff to do outdoors. Um, you know, so if you're somebody that, you know, you're kind of looking for that, like just awesome little family town that also has all the amenities of a big city, I feel like you can't go wrong with Folsom because one of the things that Folsom has basically like right off of Highway 50 and and uh, Bidwell, that's kind of like the epicenter of shopping. And it's like you've got uh, Costco on one side and you go directly across the street and you've got one of the largest shopping complexes in Northern California. And it's a big outdoor uh, shopping venue. They call it the Palladio. It's got all the high-end stores restaurants all over the place. There's like literally like a couple dozen restaurants, movie theater, all sorts of stuff. And then literally you go one parking lot over and instead of being like in the Palladio, now you're in Broadstone and you've got every single big box store that you could have ever th thought of. And then a whole bunch more restaurants. I mean, there's just so much shopping that, you know, if you're into shopping, that's the place to be at. And then, well like I said, there's tons of stuff to do outdoors. It's really nice. The schools are top notch. Um, you know, if you're into cycling, there's a ton of bike trails. And if you're like me, if you like being out on the water in the summer, um, you know, you got Lake Natoma, which is more of like a grab your kayak or paddle board or whatever and go hit the, the lake or right down the street, you got Folsom Lake where, you know, you can literally go out there with your wakeboarding boat or fishing or whatever. I mean, there's, there's a lot of options. So, you know, well, you, it's, you do a lot of business in Folsom too. And I feel like, you know, the, all the clients that I've helped you work with that have been moving into Folsom, they're all kind of looking for that same thing. They're, they're looking for that, you know, almost like the, the white picket fence neighborhood, you know, that, you know, they can move their family into basically. Well, I mean, here's the thing with Folsom too. I mean, like I'd say shopping hubs, in my opinion, number two outside of Roseville. So I'd say like Roseville still is like the, you know, restoration hardware, all that stuff. Totally. I would say like the thing with Folsom is they're going to be bringing in additional shopping because of Folsom Ranch and all the new homes, which I love. Um, I think Vista and Folsom High School are like mini colleges, you know, they're just mm -hmm. crazy how big they are. Really like also a lot of uh, colleges now are scouting like Folsom for football and everything too. So it's become kind of a powerhouse kind of sports as well too. 
Um, fun things to do, like you mentioned, like, you know, the tree lighting, holiday environment. Um, they always have concerts over there too. Um, Whole Foods, Costco, the whole nine yards. Um, but the thing that I like about Folsom, and I think I think a lot of our clients like too, is the idea that if you're new to the Sacramento area, Folsom's always the top spot that people are looking at. Folsom is just known. Thank you, Johnny Cash. So Folsom's that kind of area that people look at right away. You know, get calls probably more for Folsom than any other spot other than maybe Sacramento proper. But people are like Folsom. I love Folsom. I've heard of Folsom. They come up there. They look at it. It's beautiful. It's nice. Um, the location is fantastic. Um, let's talk a little bit about appreciation. You and I both know Folsom's appreciation has just gone crazy. Let's talk a little bit about that. What do you think? It's bonkers. But I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you're you're kind of landlocked almost in certain aspects. I mean, if you go west in Folsom, you run into a gigantic lake, which we were just talking about, or you're in Fair Oaks or Orangeville or Granite Bay. Like there's just nowhere, you know, further west than you can go. And so as this, the city of Folsom is, has built out, you know, really, if you look at it, it's built from, you know, started in the West and just continued to build eastward. And so, you know, they were already constrained. And for the longest time, there was nothing happening south of Highway 50. You and I were talking about that on a different show a while back yeah. about, like, I, I remember going there as a kid. And I mean, literally, you go out and you're messing around in the country, there's nothing out there. Yeah. So now you got all that happening. But really, you know, it's the, the thing with Folsom, in, in my opinion, is, you know, you got a bunch of really great neighborhoods to choose from. And depending on what's most important to you, whether it's like I want to be right next to the shopping or I, I want to be more like tucked into one of these little quiet neighborhoods, there's some really nice neighborhoods. And then there's also like some really higher end neighborhoods, too. Like, you know, you got some killer houses like in the bluffs. American River Canyon, um, all that spot that's like near Sutter Street uh, where you're overlooking the water and everything. I mean, Folsom's just got some top notch spots. And, you, you know, besides the price, there's really nothing to point at that's like a downer to it, really. And yeah. so, you know, when you talk about appreciation, you know, appreciation's based off of supply and demand. And there's huge demand for Folsom and there's not a lot of supply. So, of course, over the years, we've seen home prices go up and up and up and up. And it's, you know, it's really gotten to the point where unless you're, you know, able to spend, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand, depending on which neighborhood area you're looking at, you can't even get in the door. You know, gone yeah. are the days of buying a house for like four or five hundred thousand dollars or something in Folsom. But yeah. the cool thing is, is if you are somebody that can afford to buy in Folsom and, you know, you're able to live that Folsom lifestyle, you can also feel good about, you know, you're making a, although I don't feel like when you're buying a primary residence, it's necessarily an investment in, you know, definition, I guess it is. And so you are making a really good investment also. I mean, you know, you're, you're going to see home appreciation go up there a lot more than you will in other areas. So I, I feel like you can't go wrong in Folsom. Also, guys, if you like these type of videos and we're going to be break down areas, hit the like button, subscribe, comment. Let us about, know about other areas you want to talk about. But this is kind of the, some of the stuff we're going to be doing. Now, another thing about Folsom is, and this is a huge one, I call them, I call Folsom one of my like live and work areas, right? There's certain cities, certain areas in the Sacramento metro, I think that you could find a job as far as, and also live there as well too. It's a little bit easier to do. Folsom's got a nice little Bennett business center there. There's some big companies that are there. You got Intel, you got a lot of medical up in Folsom as well too. So you could actually live in Folsom and work in Folsom. Uh, Dignity Health is going into Folsom Ranch as well too. So that's kind of nice too. So for people who are thinking about maybe buying an investment property in Folsom, it has a nice little Folsom economy there as well too. But not only that, you're about maybe 20, 23 minutes from downtown Sacramento proper. So mm -hmm. if you're someone with a government job and you're saying to yourself, man, I work at the Capitol, but I'm not digging the whole like being so close and everything. I want a little separation. I want something like that. Folsom really is not that far, you know, highway wise and driving wise too. So Folsom is kind of like the best of both worlds where you kind of like, you don't really want suburb suburb, but you kind of do. You want to be kind of close to work, but you kind of don't. Like Folsom has got that really, really nice. Some people, when they think El Dorado Hills, it might just be a little far. Some people think mm -hmm. like, you know, 
uh, you know, like a Gold River and everything. Eh, it's kind of want a little bit more resorty vibe. I want to do mountain biking and stuff. So Folsom really does own its niche really nicely. And because of that, um, you know, it has a really nice reputation, not only in Sacramento, but we're talking in California and beyond. A lot of people know about Folsom. Now we're going to be going over some communities as well too. So don't think about turning off this video. We got other communities. Aaron, Aaron's going to bring us down. So let's talk a little bit about location of Folsom. Let's pop up with the first slide. Sure. Hit so, it. you know, Folsom's basically like on the east side of Sacramento, right? And it butts up to the, on the east side of it is El Dorado Hills, which we talk about a lot. And on the west side, you, you got that little lake that you can see on the map, but you got Fair Oaks, Orangeville, and Granite Bay. And so it's yep. tucked into that little sector. Now, on the very west side of Folsom, that was kind of like the, the, the you know, uh, most earliest established side. That's like where the light rail goes in. You got old Folsom, all the Sutter Street, the old shopping, all that stuff. And then as you head east, you got all the all the different neighborhoods with houses. And, and so... You know what I was saying earlier where with Folsom, it really just kind of depends on what you are looking for. Like I know like a lot of uh, younger professionals that don't have kids or like older professionals or empty nesters that like living in Folsom, but they don't want to have the big giant Folsom house with all the maintenance. They love Natoma Station, which is like literally right on the, the first part when you enter into Folsom. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, little master plan communities with HOAs and smaller yards, but they're townhomes, not condos, all that stuff. And you're right next to the Folsom outlets, right next to Highway 50. You can, you know, get around real easily. But let's say that you're somebody that you, you've got kids or you're, you're going to be having kids. And so schools are your focus, right? I, you know, really, in my opinion, it just comes down to, you know, what you can afford and, you know, whether you want to be at Vista Del Lago or Folsom High. Both are great high schools, um, but it basically, you know, if you're on like the more newer part of Folsom, like the southeast side, you're going to be Vista Del Lago. Whereas if you're like in the more established part, you're going to be in Folsom High. But the funny thing is, like, if, if we're talking about, like, Sacramento and we're talking about an established neighborhood, it's like, oh, yeah, it was built in the 50s or the 60s. When, when you're talking Folsom, it's like it was built in the 90s or maybe yeah. the 2000s or something like that. So don't feel like, you know, you're buying some, like, total fixer-upper or something like that. You know, I like, like, the areas that I spend a lot of time in, and it's just because I have family and friends over there, is basically it's you know, the bigger area you'd call it is Broadstone and then literally right across the street from it, which is Bidwell. That's the main thoroughfare that cuts through Folsom is Lexington Hills. That's kind of like where uh, Folsom Lake College is and Cal Fit, really big gym mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of people like to go to. But all those homes, they were all built like either in the 90s or, you know, the early 2000s. Most of it was built by Elliott Homes, like it was a big giant master plan community. So, you know, the whole theme of like uh, walking trails and parks and, you know, all the, you know, just the neighborhood being very well thought out and put together. Um, it, you know, checks off all the boxes in those areas. And you're right in the main thoroughfare of everything, like all the shopping, the schools, and also depending on where you have to commute to for work. Um, it's easy to get to Highway 50 from there. Yeah. So that, that's kind of the, the main areas that I see a lot of people moving into. Um, but there are some really other great niche neighborhoods. Like, uh, you know, we talked about Empire Ranch a little bit. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a sweet neighborhood if you can afford it. Um, that was like the kind of the last little strip of homes that was built on the east side of Folsom that butts up to El Dorado Hills. Like as literally the ridge goes up the hill, there's all these houses. There's Empire Ranch golf course that cuts through all the houses. Really nice up, you know, higher scale homes. Um, but, you know, you're kind of tucked back into Folsom a little bit more. So depending on, you know, how quickly you need to be able to get to 50 or whatever your case is, that may not be a, a good area for you. Well, I also really go ahead. Well, well, let's talk a little price point before we jump into these areas sure. too. As far as price point, if someone's looking to move into Folsom, they're watching this video and they're saying, "Oh my God, Folsom sounds great." What are we thinking as far as like? I would say for resale, I don't know. Maybe I mean 
eight to nine hundred thousand in most neighborhoods, unless like you know, like Empire Ranch. It, it, yeah. it comes down to how much square footage you want, really. Yeah. Like if you're trying to have a three thousand square foot home, you're probably going to spend a million bucks or or close to, no matter what neighborhood you're picking. Um, but you know, eight nine hundred thousand seems to to get you into most of the areas. Okay. Um, American River Canyon, uh, Empire Ranch, uh, Holmby Hills. There's there's a there's a couple of little like really nice little uh, niche neighborhoods where you're probably going to be a million bucks or north of that. But you know you're paying to be in those more you know nicer nicer spots. But for the most part, um, you know you're going to be able to get in like eight to nine hundred. We have seen a lot of clients, though, find houses that work for them, like in the 700 range even. It's just, you know, if, if you're looking for a lot of space for the family, I'd plan more so to be in that eight to 900 range. I think, um, I, I think if you go low eights, low, maybe even high sevens, you're going to look into the fixer territories. You know what I mean? Sure. Like probably some areas. But like, like I said, we'll break down some of these areas because we got some slides for you as far as areas go. But as far as like getting into Folsom, and that's one of the things about the new homes that are so appealing because they're competitive with the older homes. The one drawback I will say about Folsom is there's certain areas like I love these areas, but a lot of the tri-level houses, have you seen those? Kind of like kind of oh, yeah. not a big fan. You know what I mean? That's like the, the 90s the, thing though. What? That, that's the 90s thing. That was like- totally. So that was huge. So like that Lexington Hills neighborhood, for instance, that I mentioned, there's a ton of those tri-levels over there. That's just kind of like if you're going to live in those neighborhoods, you're going to run into that. Willow Creek Estates, all those like off of Blue Ravine. Well, here's the thing, though, that kind of like I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of the new home builders targeted Folsom. One is because it's a great area, jobs and all that stuff. But also because when you look at these new homes and you see kind of like the open concept comparatively oh, yeah. against some of the older homes in Folsom, you're like, Ooh, okay. I like this. They saw that, you know, that one room kind of like where like no one really used, but you have to kind of furnish it. So no, it's definitely an interesting vibe, but Folsom, you know, it's nice. I mean, it's nice. Okay. Let's hit some of these areas. Briggs Ranch. What's your feeling on it? So that's, you know, basically that's kind of like Briggs Ranch, Willow Estates. There's a whole bunch of little neighborhoods that are back there. And that's most of those were like built like in the 90s for the most part. Although yeah. there is a strip of them that was built in like the early 2000s on your way to Empire Ranch, what we were talking about. That's a cool area, though. You're going to be at Folsom High, a lot of really good like elementary, middle schools, all that stuff. Um, you're just tucked away farther. You're like in the northeast side of Folsom. So, you know, it's going to be a lot easier for you to go to like Sutter Street or to hop across up and go up into like Roseville or Granite Bay um, versus, you know, if you're trying to go to the Palladio a lot, basically, you know, it's kind of that's on the other side of Folsom. But but, you know, we're only talking about 10 or 15 minutes here. It's not like you're driving from like one side of San, San Jose to the other or something when I'm talking about commuting here, by the way. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's another thing too. Before we went, went and did this video, I saw the error and I'm like, we could literally go three to four hours easy on Folsom. It's like not even hard because there's so much to talk about about Folsom, especially for someone who's looking to kind of buy into the area. You definitely need to like look at these different areas. Like Briggs Ranch is different than Empire Ranch. Empire is different than Serpa. Like there's different areas. So even in like a Folsom where you can kind of generalize almost and say, oh, okay, I want something that's like, you know, nice and every, I mean, housing styles, structures, location, I mean, you just really have to be educated about the area because there's so many things like that stand out about these specific areas. I mean, you know, and it's literally like the jets and the sharks as far as people going, oh, I yeah. love Briggs Ranch, you know, Lexington. So you guys definitely need to figure out the areas. Okay, so Briggs I, Ranch for me. Oh, go for it. I, I was going to say, I feel like it comes down to partially, obviously, like, where do you, you know, do you have kids? Where do they want to go to school, sports, those kinds of things. But if that is not the only deciding factor. I think for a lot of people, it comes down to where do you work? If you work in downtown Sacramento, then Briggs Ranch isn't gonna be as convenient for you to get to Highway 50 in your morning commute as say like Broadstone or Prairie City or one of those neighborhoods that's closer to the 50. But a lot of people, in fact, I, I personally, I know more people that live in Folsom and work in Roseville than live in Folsom and work in like Sacramento. Because in, in Folsom, it's very easy to get to Roseville because you basically, they, they actually created, you can see it on that map, it's called the Johnny Cash Trail, but they created this kind of 
little highway that that uh, goes along the edge of Folsom Dam, and it makes it to where you don't have to drive through downtown Folsom. So like it gets really congested during rush hour in downtown because there's a lot of like stop signs and you know that stuff going on. But you can skip all that, and then literally you just drive up Folsom Auburn Road about. I think it's like six miles or something and you're at douglas boulevard and then that cuts all the way through granite bay roseville and roseville is kind of like a, a financial uh sector in terms of like there's a ton of mortgage insurance real estate stock investment like a lot of anybody that's in finance there's a lot of people in finance that that work in roseville so if you're one of those people that work there but you like Folsom, it's kind of convenient to live in Folsom and work in Roseville, especially if you live on that side of town, like Empire Ranch, Briggs Ranch, th that area. So I will say one you know, thing, though. Don't try doing that during rush hour times. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. Like, it is crazy. So if you work like off hours or you don't have to go in from like at nine o'clock and leave at five, you might want to. Yeah, because it, it's I mean, one of the things that I'm finding right now is like it's getting harder to commute from the 50 to the 80. It's just like we have these streets, you know, like the hazels and the sunrises that are just bears. So but I mean, I think if you work like a little bit off hours and if you could time it right. Yeah, definitely. It's nice. And, th and here's the thing, though, too, like. In Sacramento, guys, we love our cars. We love our trucks. You got some beautiful scenery also on that drive. That Johnny Cash Trail is nice driving up it. Oof, I like it. I like the, I like the drive-in we do in Sacramento as well, too. It's something we don't talk about too much. Okay, yeah, so Briggs Ranch, what do you think about you can get into a house there? That That's, you know, you're going to be in that seven to 800,000 range unless you get into those newer houses that were built like in the last... 10 to 15 years that are, you know, more on the east side of, of uh, Blue Ravine. Okay, but, you know, yeah, in that yeah. seven to 800 range, you're, you're going to see a lot of opportunities there. Very nice. Low HOAs. I like Briggs. All right, let's go to the next one. You're, you're one of your haunts, Lexington Hills. So yeah. Tell Lexington. us a little bit about that area. I like the park yeah. there. There's a castle park. There's like a, yeah. it's like a pirate ship park or something like that. Really nice for mm -hmm. the kids. Great family. And like, it's really like a nice vibe for a lot of families, like soccer, all that stuff. Really, really cool. What do you think? I, I like it. I mean, it's, it's definitely, if, if I were going to move to Folsom, it would be one of the areas that I would personally consider. Um, I, I, what I like about it mainly is that it's right next to everything. And it only takes about like if I were to leave my doorstep and get want to go to Highway 50, it only takes me like maybe five minutes. I mean, even when there's like a ton and ton of traffic, maybe, you know, under 10 minutes max. Oh, nice. And that's that's like if I'm like traveling during like heavy shopping hours, like Christmas Eve shopping hours. And I got to drive through the Palladio and the Broadstone Shopping Center and all that stuff. But if I'm in Lexington Hills. Um, there's some really great schools and the houses, they're really nice. I mean, the, most of them were all built like in the nineties for the most part. Yeah. And you know, there are some tri-levels like you were talking about, but I've seen a lot of like really nice remodeled ones. Um, in fact, like, uh, our cousins just sold theirs, uh, which is funny actually, cause the house that they owned was two doors down from the house that my dad owned for several years. But, um, you know, the, uh, the neighborhood's really cool over there. Um, you know, it's just nice. Everything's just really nice out there is, you know, it's kind of the way that I would put it. But, um, you know, the other area that's right next to Lexington Hills, which is great, is literally right across the street to the southwest is Broadstone. Yeah. And that's another um, Elliott Homes master plan, you know, community where, you know, all the homes are are, you know, newer and really well thought out. A lot of nice parks, walking trails, all that stuff. And I feel like in that area too, you're going to be in that seven to 800 range. Although you're going to see a lot of listings probably in the nines as well for those larger homes with yeah. the pools and, you know, the nice fully redone out, you know, backyard or, you know, they've like redone the whole house, that kind of stuff. Um, but in those neighborhoods, you know, that's kind of like the, I would say the sweet spot in terms of price point. And like, you know, the most bang for your buck, if you will. 
One of the things too about Folsom, especially that area too, I like that in Folsom, what you find is like, you're going to have these awesome parks for your kids, but you're also going to have protected land where like you mm-hmm. can go for walks, you can hang out, you can go bike trails, a whole nine yards. Like it's protected land. No one can build on it. And it's really, really nice for like, you know, if you want to go on hikes, if you want to like just go on a picnic, something a little outside of the kind of planned community parks, you know? So that I really like. Um, the other thing too in Folsom is one of the things that you should know, a lot of these communities too cater to people who maybe own boats or RVs. So a lot of the housing styles and a lot of the lots tend to be a little bit bigger so they can accommodate someone if you have a boat or if you want to get a boat. Folsom's kind of that spot. It's kind of known for that, especially because Folsom Lake is right there as well as RVs too. Definitely check the HOAs, but a lot of these areas, what you're going to notice is there's a big piece of lake, like a kind of like a piece of a driveway across next to the garage with a big gate. A lot of people store their boats there. A lot of people park their RVs there. So Folsom is kind of big for that as well too. So if you're someone who is saying, I want to move up to Sacramento, but I want to buy some toys. I want to get all that kind of fun stuff. Like Folsom's definitely an area that kind of caters to that. And um, this is what we find with a lot of people who are moving into the area. Like Aaron, they love their well, toys. That's- <laughs> my my in-laws that live in Broadstone, every house in the neighborhood, I think, has one of like a, not every single house, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but overwhelmingly, <laughs> a lot of the houses have that giant RV side, you know, cover garage kind of thing, and including my in-laws. I actually, I didn't even realize this until a few months back, but even all the houses throughout the neighborhood, they've got, if you look on the sidewalk, it's got a septic um, where you can literally, you know, clean out the septic of your RV right at your house. It goes right into the, you know, the main uh, sewage system. So it's definitely like that's that's a normal thing over there. Like a lot of people have their toys in oh, the yeah. Folsom area. And that's who, who can blame them, man? Who can blame them? OK, so now we switch gears to Empire Ranch. Empire Ranch is kind of like I'd say adjacent to El Dorado Hills. It's centered by a golf course. Uh, what, do you like Empire Ranch? How do you what do you think of it? You know, it's it's nice. I personally wouldn't if I'm going to live there, in my opinion, I, I'd rather just live in El Dorado Hills. Although, mind you, I, I would rather live in El Dorado Hills because I want right. to be in more space, you know, so I'm not exactly the, the uh, person to ask that. But, you know, Empire Ranch is newer. It's nice. It's right on the golf course. If you're into golf, that would yeah. be a sweet place to live. Oh, yeah. Um, and if you're not somebody that like has a major commute and you're like super focused on how long it takes you to get to Highway 50 or, you know, to Roseville or whatever the case is, the houses back there are nice. Yeah. And, you know, the further east you go, the more high end it gets, really. And yeah. so, you know, Empire Ranch is kind of like the end of, of uh, Folsom. And, you know, they did a really great job with that area. Um, I can't remember exactly how many houses there are. It's a decent size uh, development, but it's not massive. Um, Really just like higher end elevations and stonework and all that stuff that you don't necessarily, you're not going to see like in Lexington Hills or Broadstone or some of the older neighborhoods. So it's nice If, if you can afford Empire Ranch and you like golf, man, that's a good spot. Yeah, the, all those houses with the big E, Empire Ranch, it's nice. Now, here's the benefits of Empire Ranch. The HOA is a little bit, but if you're someone who likes El Dorado feels, feel, and you're saying, you know, I really like El Dorado, I like the hills, Empire Ranch has one benefit going over like El Dorado Hills. It's actually in smud. So... Oh, yeah. You're actually in smud territory. And if you're in Sacramento County, which Empire Ranch is and Folsom is, you actually, for your electricity, you got smud, which is honestly one third of PG&E. So in Serrano or El Dorado Hills, all that area, you're on PG&E, which is a little bit of a bear, not to mention rolling blackouts. So Empire Ranch is at that very, very tip where you kind of want to get that kind of like El Dorado Hills vibe, but you want to pay like smud electricity. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, absolutely. I didn't even think about the uh, the smud, but that's yeah. If you can avoid PG and E, that's always a good move. So you, you got <laughs> that going time. for you too. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little American River Canyon Drive. Beautiful oh, spot. Man. I mean, like I would say, in my opinion, other than maybe like East Sacramento, those like those tree lined streets, like American River Canyon Drive. When you're driving up it, and then you hit American River Canyon North, just like I mean. You feel like you're in Lake Tahoe. You got that vibe. You're going up the hill, tree-lined streets, beautiful area. What do you think? 
It's nice. I mean, that's it's all custom houses back there. So I mean, you know, it's it's higher end. If you can afford American River Canyon, uh, there's there's some sweet sweet houses out there. Oh, and yeah. I mean, depending on how much you can afford, there are some houses that have amazing views. Because like you mentioned, you kind of there's there's like if if you were looking at an elevation from like the side, Folsom kind of has like this bluff that you know it's only like maybe a couple hundred feet, but these houses, a lot of these houses in American River Canyon, they're literally on the edge of the bluff looking south. So you've just got like you're, you're just a massive view of the whole area, sunsets, downtown Sacramento, all that stuff. It's it's nice. Well, I um, like it also because you know, you're driving up, you know, you're driving up and you're seeing American River Canyon. Boom, boom, boom. And then you hit that waterfall and then you oh, flip yeah. up and then you go American River Canyon North. And these houses are monster houses up there. I mean, they're big houses up there. It's like mm -hmm. American River Canyon North. Yeah, I like that area. I like that area a lot. I think it's, it's nice. And, you know, like I said, and we, we were mentioning it, it might not be the easiest place to commute from, but man, those views, man, it's definitely worth it. You know, and again, you're on SMUD, so you can get a big house and have a fraction mm -hmm. of the pg and &E bill. All right. Yeah, but you know, in that neighborhood, I I would assume you're going to be, you know, it's going price points going to be all over the place, but you're probably going to be, you know, 1.5 or north from there, I would imagine, um, oh, yeah. depending on obviously square footage and and how, you know, nice they've done it, but most of the listings that I see in that area are, you know, they're they're multi-million dollar listings and they're just like super sweet houses. Yeah, they've definitely got the grand feel, you know what I mean? And there's certain areas, and this is how I define it, right? Like, I look at areas that give you a lot of front yard, right? Front yard space where you can mm -hmm. actually drive up a driveway and see the house. A lot of areas in Sacramento don't really do too much of that, right? So you have maybe, you know, you can see the front of the house right there, and there's maybe like a good 15 feet or something or 10 feet, and that's nice. In American River Canyon North, you're going to get more of like the driveways where you drive into the house, right? Like Grant Bay has that as well too, El Dorado Hills, there's nice areas that have that. So for me, what I've noticed in Sacramento is that you see a lot of these houses that even up at Toll Brothers, up at Skyline, they have these amazingly beautiful 4,000 square feet houses. But like you got like a good like eight feet or 10 feet between the street and the house. And for me, part of the whole idea of having something that you're paying like over a million for is have that feeling where like, you know, the circle driveway where you're driving up and then you park the car and then you're driving down. Like you want a little bit of space in front and American River Canyon North is definitely does that. I think it probably ranch probably plays into that as well, but really, really nice. But now let's talk about the area, Serpa. Serpa is like, if you're going to Costco, if you're going up the Palladio and you look up on the hill and you're saying to yourself like, is that a museum? No, 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 no. There are these houses up there on Serpa that are multi-million dollars. I think there's like a $6 million house up there that was just built. Gorgeous houses, beautiful views. And just like the, it's a, it's that hill, you know, it's beautiful. What do you think? That's well, you just said it. It's, it's, it's a hill and everybody on that hill is playing King of the Hill. And it's yeah. like, Every the every time there's another house built out there, it does kind of look like you're looking at it. And you're like, is that like a government building? That, like what, it, what? Oh, that's a house. Yeah. And it's, you know, like a 20,000 square foot home or something crazy like that. I mean, obviously not, you know, your average consumer is not going to be, you know, moving to Serpa. But, you know, if if you're able to, uh, you know, afford that that level of uh, of neighborhood, I mean, it's kind of sky's the limits. I mean, in terms of Folsom, that would probably be your most expensive area. Um, oh, yeah. And it's all custom. Every house there is over the top. And it seems like everybody that, you know, what little le uh, land is left, every new house that gets added is like over, you know, just more extreme from the last one. Oh, yeah. And there's not a lot of lots left there to buy. There's maybe a handful, like maybe two or three left. But what a lot of people in Sacramento did is um, they kind of researched areas and people bought lots and just sat on them. A lot of people made money of them, off them, but a lot of people also built there. And, you know, like that area right now is just like one of the crown jewels of Folsom. And you could see it when you're driving. It's beautiful. Some of the houses I'm not a big fan of when you see them from the, like I said, they don't have that like, that like, you know, I don't know, not the vibe I'd go for, but really beautiful area. I mean, you can't beat the views. I mean, once also Folsom Ranch and that whole area is developed really, really nice. I mean, you can see downtown easily and they're just, it's just a beautiful place. And you got Vista right on the other side of that, which is one of the high schools. And then you got Folsom in the front of it. And, you know, you got one of my favorite haunts, Costco. I mean, you got it all, man. You got it all. All right. So let's hit 
what was it? Dun, dun, dun. All right, let's talk. The last slide is going to be of all the new homes being built in Folsom. We're talking like between 15 to 35,000. The, the estimates go back and forth. But for the most part, if you're driving on the 50 and you're going to Tahoe from downtown Sacramento, um, you're going to see this big construction zone you know, when you get off in East Bidwell and if you turn right, and that's Folsom Ranch, Russell Ranch, but we'll call it Folsom Ranch for this video. We're talking some new houses. You got every builder out there like crazy. You got Lennar, you got Taylor, you got TriPoint, you got Beezer now, you got New Home Company, and they're just building like crazy out there. You got Regency by Toll Brothers as well too. So what do you think that that's going to do to the market? Well, I, I think it's going to make the market just blow up like in a good way. Yeah. Um, you know, the... Folsom has a really high demand and it's always had a, a low supply. So I feel that between the major economic uh, centers out, you know, you got Intel, one of the largest private employers in the area. They employ like 6,500 people there, um, although that might have changed recently. But, um, you know, you got Mercy, Safe Credit Union. There's a lot of big um, employers, plus Folsom State Prison, uh, you know, there's a lot of employment. So you've got a lot of high paying jobs out there as well. And so, you know, as uh, Folsom continues to expand and assuming that they're able to achieve all their goals and their build out plan with all the shopping centers and the town hall that's going to be on the south side and all that stuff, um, I, I feel like it's you're just going to have like it's going to be a replica of Folsom one, you know, Folsom two or whatever you yeah. want to call it. But it's going to be really nice. And, uh, you know, you're going to have probably continue to have that same theme of really good schools and all that stuff. Me personally, I just I don't like the new build stuff, but that's because I, I like space. And so no matter where you're buying, whether it's Folsom or Roseville or, you know, you pick the area, it doesn't really matter if you're buying a brand new house unless like you went out and bought a lot somewhere and you're custom building a home, you know, the builders, they really kind of pack those things in. So, you know, the, the thing that I feel like you give up with the new, the new builds is space, but then you get, you know, in return, everything's brand new and really nice. So it's kind of, you know, whatever, um, you know, kind of floats your boat, I suppose, but the, there's a lot of great opportunities in Folsom and yep. that's just going to continue to expand as that, you know, I think they'll probably get closer to that 30,000 range based it's off all the space. They got tons of space. Well, they got, they haven't even touched the commercial. You got Dignity Health going in there. You have a new elementary school right in front of the Taylor Morrison first development over there. You have plans for more schools. You got the nature preserve close to Anatolia, which is just going to add even more mm -hmm. housing to like a nice commercial area there. Um, I don't know. It's crazy. Now, the thing that I like the most about Folsom Ranch is the idea that like in other areas and people don't realize this in other areas of the United States, new homes are like 10, 15, 20 percent more than resale homes. The thing that's crazy about Folsom is if you look at what you're getting in Folsom for a new home, it's like it's actually cheaper than the resale market in Folsom and they're easier to get. And the resale market in Folsom is a pain in the butt because there's not a lot of inventory. And usually the houses that come up for sale, mm -hmm. oof, they blow up. So one of the things that I do like about the Folsom Ranch area is the idea that if you want to go into the Folsom Ranch area, like I saw, what was it? Like 3,000 square foot Alexa floor plans by Richmond American. Not the greatest size backyard, but those things were going in the low eights. And an idea of getting something in the resale market in Folsom, like 3,000 square feet, you're not getting that in the eights, man. You're not even getting in the nine, it, maybe low nines, but like at the same time. And you got, you know, solar included, a lot premium. So I don't know. I go back and forth with it. But the thing is, the new home builders were very, very smart by picking Folsom. Well, you know, one of the things with, with Folsom that's going on too that will play a role is at the same time, you've got Anatolia continuing to expand. You've got Elk Grove continuing to expand. And there's this whole Grant Line Road that for the longest time was like a single lane country road and then it became a two lane and so on. And now it's now it's, you know, almost a freeway. <laughs> um, in fact, the, you know, at some point they they keep threatening to, to actually turn it into a highway. But when when that happens, um, it, you know, that's going to really kind of expand commerce and, you know, people commuting for work and all that stuff, because 
you know, you got a lot of people that work in the Elk Grove Unified School District, but yep. live outside of Elk Grove. And so El that's a huge employer. And so, you know, with the expansion of those other areas and then Folsom continuing to come south, they're all going to kind of connect and merge at some point. And you also have the same thing. You go one exit up from from uh, Russell Ranch and you go to Latrobe in El Dorado Hills and they're building like crazy to the south out there, too. So there's there's definitely a lot of opportunity out there and it's in like one of the most desirable areas so if i were to like you know stake my flag in in you know some newer area that would definitely be one of the ones that i'd be considering well here's the thing is also like the desirable factor but also the known factor a lot of people are like oh you know where should i buy where should i buy the idea that because Folsom is known outside our metro area right like people in the bay area know about it other areas mm -hmm. of the country know about it you have more demand because other areas have heard of it and so i always look at a supply and demand thing supply is always going to be limited in Folsom, but you have this outside Sacramento metro area demand that's going to always help propel areas like Folsom to be even like more popular because someone in San Jose said, hey, I hear Folsom's a spot to buy. If I'm moving to Sacramento, I want the it location and I heard of Folsom. So let's take a look at it. And this is the stuff we get a lot of the time. So I do think though, you know, in this market of like interest rates, all the stuff and everything too, hedging your bets the best thing possible with an area like Folsom. And, you know, don't trust Aaron and my opinion on this. Like, look at the historical data of Folsom. Look at the property prices, how they've gone up. Look at the current market as far as like how fast things sell there, how much they're, you know, appreciating, all that stuff. All that stuff is online for you to check out. But Folsom definitely is that spot where if you're looking at maybe like 800s to maybe sky's the limit, Folsom's definitely got to be on your radar. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's it's on everybody's radar. So I'd be surprised if it wasn't on on yours as a prospective home buyer. <laughs> well, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. This is all about Folsom, California and the Sacramento real estate market. Like the video, comment. We're gonna be doing more of these videos showcasing various areas, giving you a little bit of information on the communities in the areas, price points, future buys, all that fun stuff. And Aaron, any party words? No, we'll, we'll see you guys on the next one. See you later. Guess what guys, the video just ended. But don't worry, we have more videos just like that one right over there. And if you missed that red subscribe button during the course of the video, we got you covered right there. Hit that subscribe button. We promise to bring you some amazing content. We won't let you down. Now, if you're looking for a team in the Sacramento metro area to work with, we'd love to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. We always include a Zoom link down below. So book a time where we can talk to you a little one-on-one, -on -one, find out exactly what your real estate needs are.